Welcome back, folks. Game number two set to get underway here between Ad Phenom and the Rebels. Game one looking pretty convincing. What do you think? Chances we see another Marana mid here, Fogged. I really hope not. It was pretty bad that game. I, I can't lie. He did great in the laning phase and stuff, but you could see in the engagements and the team fights, it just it was just even more than lackluster. You, yeah. They had some nice movements and stuff with the Moonlight Shadow, but either way, it just it's not enough for coming out of your mid mid uh, mid yeah. hero when you commit a Midas and you get like an Agonims and everything. So much to farming, and then you you're not really even your yeah. entire ten thousand net worth isn't even used in the fights. Basically, it feels like to make that build work, you need to have some way to draw out those team fights. All the team fights ended so fast. Like the Sven will get a stun on two heroes, three right clicks, and they're just dead, and the fight's basically over. Yeah, they know? had so much lockdown as well for the Marana, and yeah. maybe it comes down to them picking it so early. They, they kind of just like yeah, they right opened there. with it. Yeah, it was in the first so. two. We'll see here, but uh, looking into game number two, initial bans coming out. Wisp taken out by the Rebels, and uh, Doom Alk banned by Ad Phenom. Yeah, it looks like Ad Phenom is doing the Doom Doom Alchemist ban versus this team, rather than the Doom Batrider. Dude, I'm totally do. okay with Doom Alchemist bans right yeah. now. That's appropriate. This team is getting new fans by the minute, I think, just based on their banning. Five yeah. seconds. So what's your Reserve what's your favorite bag. part about this uh, this new patch here, Fog? Are you, are you digging on these new Aghanims upgrades? Are we ever going to see an Aghanims on the gyro that isn't just a total troll game? I still have not gotten a good answer from anyone as to a scenario where that Ags is worth it. No. <laughs> it's just what does it do? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's just kidding. I mean, it is. It might as well be a, a question mark. I mean, you need you need like your item slots, and you you can't spend four thousand gold on an Aghanims usually. It's like the only time I think it's okay is if Alchemist gives you an Ags, and in that case, it's like you're already in luxury mode anyway. Yeah. I mean, you'll always take a free Aghanims from a from an Alk if he can give it to you. I don't know. There's, I like you know he Ice Frog did say initially that he did want every hero to have Aghanims. Doesn't mean they have to be good. They can just That's be wacky true. like Earthshaker, which is hilarious. It's true. It's hilarious and. I don't know. I, I think we'll see that one come into play, perhaps. So there'll probably yeah. be a high, some high-profile game that goes 65 minutes where he gets the Ags, four staff blank, and he's just jumping all over the place. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of it's gonna there's a lot of Ag scepters that are kind of like weird and wacky and stuff that people just don't use. Like, like I mean, like Beastmaster isn't weird or wacky, but people just don't use it because it's not very good. Yep. Sure, it puts the cooldown of his ult a little lower and makes it a little bit yeah. longer range and stuff. But he has one of the boring ones that's basically just a straight upgrade. It just kind of yeah. makes the spell generally better, but exactly. keeps it the same. I like Puck's Ags upgrade. I think that's one that people often forget about. Yeah, Puck's is really cool. 4.5 second stun that goes through BKB. You kind of just want other items Damn. first. That's the only thing that it really comes down to. Yeah. Well, all right. Rebels Three sticking to their two. guns here. It didn't work for them last game, but they're going to... Oh, wait, no. Other way around. They're taking the Slardar this time. Okay. They stayed on the same sides. Madara played the Slardar. Now Rebels are going to take it and, I guess, show them how to Slar. Do they take the Enchantress again? They have a Beastmaster this time, but... Uh, hmm. I don't know. Five seconds. Prophet Slardar. Do you think the, like, Blade Mail Null Tally uh, Prophet will ever come back into fashion? Yeah, I've seen some people do. I know Bambo still really likes it. He does it in a lot of his games. Really? I mean, with the Blade Mail buffs, it feels like it could come back into vogue. Yeah, it just seems like people more like him as like you know the phase drum and all that instead of like the treads blade mail where you just kind of like throw your life and just jump into into fights. Yeah, everybody wants to sit back and be the carry these days. Yeah, get that farm on, be that additional carry. We can't all be carries. But yeah, for rebels right now, setting up already for a lot. They have uh, Furion as well as a starter for Roshan. It's good for pushing as well. Furion just always opens up the map for a lot. But the one thing it does do, which a lot of people say, is when you do have the Furion, your team kind of lacks this initiation type factor. And they pick the Slardar for Damn that. Man. And we do see Advinum. Here you go. Didn't take work in game one. Take but the damn Marana again. Might work in game two. Now, do you think they'll run it the same way? There's always the option that they could put her on the four and have her be a roaming support. Yeah, they could do that. It, it's also very different when you're playing with a hero Radiant like Beastmaster. Bay. You have visioned all throughout the game, so you're able to set up your arrows a lot better, easily, True. a lot more easy, uh, a lot easier with the roar as well. So it's at least got a setup for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I actually think roaming Murana on the four is really not that bad right now. Now that the arrow one-shots creeps, you can actually find a fair bit of farm in between if you don't get kills. And yeah, we did see, uh, we saw like Fear playing it and stuff. 
Yeah. A couple weeks ago, and he's got he I fear owned that game. I remember he had like a 15 minute like Mac, 15 minute like arcane boot into like Mac into almost guarding Greaves. And he yeah. Was support Morana. He was like carrying them basically. It's I think can definitely be a lot more effective than uh, the Midas Ags rush. Yeah. But we'll see. Die it could work man. out because maybe the fights get drawn out a little more because the Beastmaster with the initiation tool. Yeah. Well, Rebel's going to take a page out of game one. They'll pick up the Slardar, and they opt to ban the Sven that they used so effectively against Slardar in game number one. Yeah, smart choice, go. I think. Definitely a good choice. I think Sven is probably one of the best heroes to deal with the Slardar in a core seconds. position. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sven is still really, Reserve really strong. He's, I think maybe even stronger now because of the armor change. Yeah. I really like the, the build-up. He's just that perfect mix of ability to farm and fight, and he can kind of taper it and cater it to whatever that game needs. If you need to fight early, he can happily do it, and if he needs to just sit back and passively farm, boy, can he do that well. Yeah, it's so nice because he's pure physical, so the jungle isn't hard, hard for him at all. He just clears it super easily. Yeah. I mean, honestly, <laughs> in a super greedy situation, you can put him in the jungle and he can farm pretty fast. Yeah. That Iron Talon. Hmm. Iron Talon is quite the item and now we do see it again Radiant we see the ricky ban so yeah af brought some respect out of their opponents yesterday from picking that ricky i mean ricky's definitely annoying to play against and there is some merit when the patch is kind of fresh just to get rid of those heroes that are are really just annoying yeah invis heroes are definitely to frustrating to play against especially when you're not yeah. really used to it kind of just throws your game off I still think the smoke screen is still. Uh, I, if you think of him as a, a roaming yeah, force support, it. that is an amazing support ability. It's like a mini disruptor ult on a much shorter cooldown. Yeah. And now Rebels Radiant goes for their spirit for themselves. Wow. It's like Rebels are going to say, all right, we whomped you guys last time. Now we're going to take your heroes and show you how to play them right. That's, yeah. that's the statement they're making with this draft. Very bold. Interesting. Very, like. Super interesting, like to see them pick up Dying the air spirit. I don't really see an exact reason why to, but I'm not really seeing the synergy yet across their three heroes. All like individually good heroes, but he's good for like he can secure the laner also for his Furion, so he can like mm -hmm. kind of chill down there and make sure his Furion gets levels and farm, and he can pressure the Damn cause that chaos that we saw in the last game too. Yeah, and we do see AF go for that. S you know, their safe pick that they do like the disruptor. Which also Rebels does like, so I feel like that's kind of maybe like a, a deny pick slash. Yeah. Reserve time. Yeah, Ad Phenom definitely have uh, better team fight this go around. Fair bit of crowd control and the disruptor to help set up some of those kills. So Rebels still need what? They need their mid hero. So they usually do play the puck. But they have picked a few tinkers in in the recent past and alchemists but that was banned like we were saying the puck worked really well for them last game it seemed like almost every fight he was getting three four hero coils pretty yeah. commonly i wouldn't really see why not to pick it again maybe the disruptor kind of scared them a little bit from picking it but i think it also just pairs nicely with the earth spirit again with that uh, yeah. the whole veil thing both those heroes once you get a veil out their damage increases so much yeah he's good with the call but they go for their support instead so venge this is just a solid safe safe pick up more minus armor more damage for pushing buildings, mm -hmm. you know, Slardar plus Venge, they have really good Roshan potential now. Always good to have Venge against those massive stuns like the Sacred Arrow and the Primal Roar. Yeah. Save somebody if they get caught out. Exactly. Same with the Disruptor, you know, somebody gets caught in a Static Storm Jesus Kinetic Field, you, you've you got to get out of jail free card, but here's a change of pace. Now we've got the Arrow with the Roar, and we've got the Arrow with the Kinetic Field, which isn't really the best, and then we have the Arrow with the Chrono, which hopefully doesn't miss. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Baseless Void, all right. It's been looking pretty good this patch. Another hero that China has not embraced at Damn all. We have seen very go. few void games in that qualifier. He kind of seems to be falling out a little bit, Five but I'm, I still think he's quite strong. He definitely fits in some lineups. I mean, the, the chrono is quite good. Some of his changes have been Radiant interesting. Band. Yeah, time dilation is very frustrating to deal with, especially as Slardar. Yeah. Because you have such low cooldowns on all three of your spells. Yeah, time lock getting a slight buff in this patch as well. Radiance pick. Uh, Void's always an annoying hero. Doesn't really matter what patch it is. Definitely a good ban coming out from a AF, banning out the puck. I think that's probably the best bet. Yeah. So does Rebels just take the Tinker here? That is what it looks like. Tinker, Quap, uh Spirit Breaker. Whoa, Spirit Breaker that's for AF. For the Furion, I guess. 
don't think I've seen a Spirit Breaker yet this qualifier. I think we had one the other day. I, I'm like almost positive we had one. Interesting. This could be an... In, uh, I'm trying to it think about difficult. Spirit Breaker on this patch. He's not one that's come up in most of the theory crafting discussions that have I've come about off camera here at the hub. No, and that also means... So Reserve what, Jungle tag. Beastmaster and it's a... I don't know where their lanes are. So it Am I missing something? Am I like not thinking properly? No, this is really weird lane setup. Probably off lane void. Jungle Beastmaster. Who's mid? Go. Marana's mid? Then Marana safe mid. Lane. Safe lane. Spirit Breaker? Five Maybe six. it's a... S are we going to see Midas Mask of Madness void? Are we going to see the, the old be. school carry void? Oh my god, a Broodmother by Rebels. They have very little to deal with that Broodmother. So it is going to be the carry void. All right. Wow. And it's offlane Beastmaster. I, I thought that's what it I mean that's what it had to be, but yeah. I didn't really think that was That's really fallen out of fashion though. Yeah, that's something that we don't really see people do too often anymore. So maybe he'll go for that Vanguard Radiance. Vanguard very possibly. Yeah. We did actually see the the Hand of Midas Mask of Madness build. I was being a bit oh facetious, yeah? but somebody did do it earlier and uh I think I saw a uh Lumi almost had an aneurysm. I think I saw a, not a Midas, but it was like an Aquila into Echo Saber Void build too. Oh. That, seen. that was kind of cool. Now, what do you think about Echo Saber on uh, Spirit Breaker? I wonder how that works. Doesn't it have like an internal Ten cooldown to go. on the Greater Bash? You, I don't know if you can bash like back to back on the hits. Five, I maybe? don't. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't think you can bash back to back, but I was thinking more it just gives you a chance to get an opening bash when you engage on somebody. It could be interesting. Yeah, definitely possible. And I think the stats work pretty well for him. You know, he does have some mana regen issues. He always wants a little bit of strength. Probably not going to see it coming out of a support spirit breaker, though, unfortunately. Well, yeah. When you're right, you're right. Maybe in your pibs. Maybe <laughs> in your pibs. I just like theory crafting the new items on, on a new patch. On so everyone. Always an exciting time, man. It's like, how about Blightstone? 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 On Blightstone? Yeah, oh, Blightstone. yeah. Have you talked to yeah. Lumi this event? Blightstone? Blightstone? <laughs> Blightstone, yeah. Blightstone we should just go Lumi. find some rocks and give them, like, hey, Lumi, we found you a Blightstone. Will you shut the hell up about it now? <laughs> just kidding, Lumi. It's a good item. I haven't seen it being picked up too much, actually. No, I mean, I, I'm making fun of him, but I, I think his, his point is well taken that it seems like a lot of uh, people are not really considering Blightstone as, like, uh, just a a value item to pick up and then sell back. Like, it's only being picked up if you want to buy a Desolator or yeah. you want to buy a Medallion. But I think there is some credence to, like, a Roaming Venge just picking it up and having it to add extra damage to your team or to push towers, for example, you know, because it's, it's a debuff. So it buffs up creeps, everyone else, to do more damage, not just you. Yeah. You know, if you sell it back, 150 gold is really not too much if you think about how much damage it could potentially no, it's, add. It's, it's, really inter it's a really nice item. I saw somebody yesterday, instead of going for the Orb of Venom on Earth Spirit, we saw the Blightstone mm -hmm. starting. So that was a... Probably not the best choice, but very interesting. Yeah. Change up. A little so bit of change. Wh what's the current state of Brood? I feel like it's been a while since I've casted a Brood game. I don't, I really do, I don't really know, to be honest, because you don't really see him too often. It's very good this game, though, but the Spirit Breaker pick was also quite good versus it. Yeah. Kind of once he gets a charge off, free detection. Yeah. Let's see what Spirit Breaker... Oh, uh, Spirit Breaker's even starting with the Dust, so they're, they're going to be looking to shut down the Brood Mother a lot. But either way... That's what the Brood pick does. It forces your support, so it forces all three people to be in that safe lane. And they yeah. don't really have any... They don't really have the best kill potential at all. Like Void doesn't really give too much to the table, and they have Disruptor Spirit Breaker. That's their, that's their catch, which yeah. is a good catch, but Void. No, I mean, we've seen a lot of games in the past where a Brood can go 0-7 and seven in the first 20 minutes, but if they have to spend constant Sentry Wards, Dust, three heroes ganking her, that's a lot of space created in the other lanes, and... You know, it kind of doesn't really matter if Brood ends up feeding if it takes that much attention off the, you know, the other cores. Not a fun hero to play against, that's for sure. Nope, definitely not. And it does seem like... Hmm. Taking a look at their... Wait a minute. Dude, this Slardar is tricked out, man. This set is awesome. Look at this weapon. I'm just... I'm intrigued by Skylark's build on the Beastmaster. He went for eight tangos and a salve with a stout shield. That is a lot of regen. It's very different to see that from offlaners. This is like a one v one build. Yeah. Even even the void has the same same items. Very, huh? Very different.
feel like the Beastmasters are more commonly just grabbing that Quelling Blade, so if they get zoned out, they can just easily retreat into the jungle and transition into the Iron Talon. Yeah, I guess he feels like he's going to be able to force the issue in that top lane because it's like Avenge Slardar. But Maybe. With the Earth Spirit coming in, it can... It's kind of a tall order. ...be pretty scary, even though he is so tanky. Just a lot of regen. A lot of regen. We'll see if he oh. gets value out of it. Yeah. Uh, bounty runes on the way here. Looks like we won't see an early game fight. Just the, oh, as I say that, Skylark gets stunned up. Not like this. Vanscore trying to block him out. Well, at least Vanscore misclicked his boulder there and didn't roll even further into the tower. Yeah. Because I think he would have actually rolled in. It took a few tower hits if he did it. Place the boulder first down. Or, you know, the stone remnant into the boulder. Yep. So what's the sentry situation looking like down here? They've got one already. Shotchlo getting charged, glimpsed back. Getting All some good damage on him. Yeah, already. Struggle. He does have three sentry wards on his own. Uh-oh. Is he going to get it? Very and nice by Vanscore. No cargo, but still a dead courier right off the bat. Kind of the dream for the roaming uh, Earth Spirit. Yeah, that's not what you want. I feel like you kind of knew that he was up there, too. So there's a little bit of a misplay there by Thug sending his courier just directly back. Yep. And they are going to play this Marana the exact same way as they did in game one. I'm curious if he's going to alter the build, though. It was Midas into Agonims. Oh, wait a minute. Also, that's a Slardar mid. Uh-oh. That is different. I thought they were going to put the Fury on mid in the Slardar top. So I guess that's why the Beastmaster bought so much regen. Because he can force versus a Fury on. I guess he thought he was going to be put in more of like a 1v, 1v1 slash... 1v2 scenario. Yeah. They're making him chew through that regen pretty quick, though. He's already down to five tangos. And Sedoi doesn't really seem too much worse for wear. Skylark still with zero last hits and just four denies. Yeah, I so really did think that we were going to see the uh, Slaughter safe lane in the Furion mid, but I guess Sedoi is the Furion player for the most part anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So. It's uh, kind of a classic player Classic hero matching hero. Yeah. yeah so marana versus slardar mid not one of your classic mid matchups no, very though. well for slardar marana's starting to catch up a little bit but tmw is definitely holding his own nice early bottle here and he'll get a regen rune so he can be a little more aggressive perhaps oh and also uh speaking of blightstone if you would like to click on furion <sighs> you're going to be very satisfied wow He's got the early wind lace and a casual blightstone. This is great, man. Yep. It's going to make pushing that tower a little bit easier, buff up the damage on those treants. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. And it's really nice to have that minus armor. However, the thing that can be annoying with the blightstone is last thing under your tower, it can really mess with you. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Having to deal with that minus armor, is, it changes up the damage differences a lot. Change like the break points on yeah. uh, the range creep under the tower and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Instead of two hits with your 61 damage, it might be only it might be three hits. Yeah, okay. In order to get the last hit. Uh, that, that is a good point. And maybe th those are the little changes that I think why players are sometimes slow to adapt to new items like that because it just takes a while to get comfortable with those new little tweaks that, you know, you just don't know until you try. Yeah. And you don't want to try in a tournament that could qualify you for a major. Right now, yeah, they're going to glimpse him back. The Brood Got the charge on him too. Definitely in some trouble. Dust about to expire. He's going to try to turn and get a first blood himself. Not quite able to do it. And it does go for the Radiant. Madara actually gets the bonus gold. Meanwhile, up top, Skylark probably going to die as well. Sedoi hit him with the Blightstone. There it is. One for one around the map. Nice movement. Mm -hmm. Sedoi getting slowed up by that boar, though. <laughs> yeah, pretty annoying. So checking back in on the mid lane here. It's still Slardar's lane. 17 and 6 compared to the 12 and 2 bottom. TMW's really having a good time here. The poor man shield. Thug can't really harass him. He's got pretty good base damage and anim animation on the Slaughter compared to the Marana. Yeah. It's pretty much the same base damage, so... Yeah, really well played by TMW putting in that, uh, yeah. that CS war right now. Creep block chance, 53%. What an obscure number to choose for that. Why couldn't it just be when 50? Did it, when did it, yeah, that's really interesting. Such a <laughs> weird number. 53%. All right. <laughs> 53 plus 17, must unlock some sort of a secret. Probably. 70%? <laughs> seems good. Seems really good. Shotchlo level 3 here is the Brood. Four last hits. A pretty slow start for him. Of course, he did just uh, fall victim to the first blood, but 
Uh oh, invisibility rune on Sardar. We'll hold that thought as he sets it up for Vanscore to come in. There's the leap from Thug, but he is in a world of hurt. The Oov making all the difference in the world here. Even Sadoi teleporting in Bottom that lane little well. extra bit of damage. They will get the kill on the Broodmother. So again, a one for one around the map. Marana, as well as the Broodmother, head to the well. Pretty good for Rebel though, killing the mid laner there. Yeah. And they're really moving Sidoy around a lot in this early game already. I think that's so how Venge. you want to play the Prophet these days. Yeah. Super active. He's level, he's almost level five. Venge is level four. So Venge is very happy. Yeah. They're going to be setting up for Beastmaster now too. Skylark, you're in very far up, man. A rotation from the backside. Vanscore connects. Metpum's got a magic missile coming. Arshi blows. This should be a dead Beastmaster. Three to two as Rebel get another one up on the scoreboard. Nicely played. Now Slardar's level six in this Bottom mid lane. lane. It's a little scary, but oh, here we go. Sachlo. What do you do against that? Back-to-back -back bashes by Madara. The bash lords are in town. Yeah, this is really rocky for the Brood. You know, I was saying that sometimes it can be worth it for the Brood to feed a little bit if it takes the attention away from the other lanes, but getting close to that point where this Brood is just actually getting shut down completely. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's a bit scary, but he is getting at least a little bit of levels. He's level three, thankfully. Yeah. But the AF is just doing a really good job of securing that safe lane. The Spirit Breaker and the Disruptor are playing it basically perfectly. So at what point does the Brood try to like re retreat to the jungle to get a little recovery farm going or something? Kind of hard to do that as Brood, though, especially yeah. when you're this low level. He really needs to get more levels before he does anything. He's just got to keep going down there and just deal with the pain. Uh oh, TMW taking a lot of damage here. Spartan comes in with a nice kinetic field. They almost have the damage to kill him. That last Thunder Strike will actually be enough. Sadoi trying to finish off Thug. He gets off the Sprout. Fairy Fire's eaten. Arrow comes out, and Sadoi falls as well. Two heroes dead as AF get a double in the mid lane. Both of them going the way of the Disruptor. Spirit Breaker a little late to the party, but the dream here in the mid lane. Yeah, perfect for a thug there. I thought he was actually going to go down, but nice fairy fire usage. And then arrow into starfall. Not yeah. much, uh, just enough damage to kill a Furion. Gotta love those <coughs> fairy fires. Well, the core void looks like he might actually go for that Mask of Madness. Somebody's Does rolling. Look like it. Rolling in their grave right now. What do you, what do you think about the Mask of Madness void? I, I think I heard somebody say earlier that Mask of Madness is a dead item. It got buffed in this patch. Madara's proven us wrong. I think it can be fine. Especially if you're playing like a you're playing a one void that you you might you need to get something to ramp your damage up. Yeah. I think it's fine. Chronosphere on the Sachlo. It's gonna be yet another kill. Spirit Breaker charging. They've got a fresh sentry ward down. Broodmother's down and they glimpse back the Venge. My god. Sadoi. Teleport down to the bottom lane. Madara just laying in the right click. Moonlight Shadows come out. Sadoi is actually going to get stuck inside of the kinetic field. Vanscore comes in to try and help him out. He'll get the kill on the Disruptor. That's a dominating streak ended. A nice bounty going the way of Sadoi. Vanscore just backs up. Brute still only level 3 fogged. He's been level 3 for like the past 4 minutes. Yeah, he's just got to keep going down there. He really needs to get the levels. So if they get the kill on Madara, this is huge. That's going to give him so many levels. TMW is in a good position. Gets the stun off. There we go. Him. Sets it up easy for Vanscore. And it's the Earth Spirit that actually gets credit for the kill. There we go. Level four. Yeah. Much needed kill there. Yeah, now he's gonna he should be able to get level five in this lane, and that's gonna be more than enough for him to just do his own thing. And then he shouldn't really die. He should go to use his spiders to scout out, as well as have his soul ring and just take jungle farm. Yeah, there's that soul ring. Kind of a key item that opens up a lot more possibilities for Brood. Skylark though, doing very well. Almost 40 CS, level seven, level seven on him on his way toward his Necrobook already. Yeah, he's getting a lot of good farm up here. Still just sitting on the brown boots. Happy as a clam to farm while Sadoi rotates around the map. That is one byproduct of all these rotations. I think they've been mostly well worth it, but it's given a lot of space to Skylark for sure. Furion has his drum complete now. Phase boot, drum, blightstone. Pretty Spartan scary right click right now. Smoked in the bottom trees, waiting to wait for the brood. He knows he's there. Do they get vision of him? Gotta get the sentry ward down, but shots on the other side of the tree line. Starting to farm pretty effectively. Walks back Got into him. the sentry range. Oh my! Beautiful kinetic field. And they're just gonna chase him down. Brood's dead again. It's five deaths in nine minutes. He might be dying a little bit too much for his team to handle. Yeah. Madara is actually going to be going for the Vlad's build, so. Dude, look at this sick Blightstone. He says to you, the 
Mask of Madness is a dead item. <laughs> yeah, Blightstone is really good with Kieran. The trains is well benefiting, and now Vanguard getting re-engaged on. A little bit of an overcommitted dive for Skylark. Yep, he's going down. Another glimpse. Now. TMW on the run. Is he going to be able to slither his way away? Spartan almost uh, has an unfortunate demise. Lucky he didn't get bashed with that first hit, but does get off the Static Storm Kinetic Field. They get the kill on the Slardar now, and again, it's AF. They get a, a tr duo of kills that are pretty nice. Charge forward will get interrupted by the stun. And Axes clear out the Sprout. The Mirana is starting to work though. Oh, that slow boulder that doesn't even move. Doesn't hit anybody. Adara is inbound. There's Chrono a Chronosphere. Does he drop it for just the Venge? They probably don't even need it. Oh, first hit bash. My god. What a time lock. Gives Brood some time to farm though. Get some get that catch up which he really needs. Yeah. AF yeah, starting to pull ahead though. A nice uh, 3k net worth lead or so, 4k experience. So TMW is not going to go for a blink or anything on the slaughter first. He's still going to go for that armlet rush. Interesting. Radiance a lot of players seem to be uh, stuck in their ways here. Looks like Thug going for the Midas once more on the Mirana. Probably looking for the uh, Aghanims after that. Yeah, he's 0 1 and 4, but the Mirana is paying off pretty decently so far. Yeah, yeah there's that Vlad's on the Void that like you're talking about. Good stuff. Much more fitting for Void in his current form and how he's been played. Though, you think this is a little bit risky given that he was their safe lane farmer going into this more kind of utility Void instead of quote unquote carry Void? It still gives you damage. It's still, it gives you the damage, gives you like mana regen and stuff. I, I think the Vlad's is still okay. He can just go for other uh, damage builds if he wants. So maybe even the Yasha into the Manta into Diffusal or bottom lane we do see Spartan. Yep, a lot of spiders here, but they're just going to get cleared up. Actually, a fair bit of farm going the way of this Disruptor, and they just destroy the Earth Spirit. Another failed gank for the Dire, and now they're all split up. TMW going one way, the rest of the squad going the other. Charge in five. Yeah, this is not going to end well for Slardar. Nice stun onto Madara, but maybe next time should be able to just set this up. Is he going to have another crush to stop the stun from coming? No, he's not. Double bash from the Spirit Breaker. Triple. My god. Glimpse back now. Slardar trying to play the great escape, but right into a primal roar. Beautiful setup from AF. They're oh not no. done yet, though. They're going to continue chrono. on. Chrono on two. Van scoring. Big trouble. He's next to go down. Metpum soon to follow. AF breaking this game wide open here, Fog. 14 to 5 at the 12 minute mark. They are completely in control. Earth Spirit is just looking like a, like, like a poop hero. I mean, he had a pretty decent show in the last game, but this game. Van score is all over the place and he's rolling in to try to set up for kills and then he just dies. Instantly. Yeah. Every single time. Oh, do they know the shot goes there? Oh my god, are they gonna get him again? He's got another sentry ward down. He doesn't know where it is. He walks right back into the sentry. Look how perfectly this is placed to encompass his entire web right here. Really good ward placement. This they disruptor just got so rich. He killed all those spiders and then they killed three heroes. He's got 1700 gold! Yeah, he played it super well. He glimpsed the Furion out as soon as he came in. He got a beautiful disruptor or a d beautiful static storm post kinetic field on all the spiders that like you were saying. And yeah, he's rich. Dude, that's incredible. So what are we up to here? This is now a 5k net worth lead. Void still topping the charts. So Marana maybe has the her. Marana will work. Midas, yeah. Let's jinx it right here. Well, having a chrono to set up definitely makes that build a little more viable. You stand outside the chrono, let your star storms come out. More synergy across this lineup than yeah. what they had last time, for That's sure. That's what we were, yeah, just like we were saying in the draft. The Beastmaster Roar to set up for the yeah. arrows as well. They have the Marana ult to set up for the Roar to get in position so he doesn't need a Blink Dagger too early. We've got the whole kit and caboodle this go around. And I heard a smoke gank, so we look at Skylark with Roar in book two as well as the Spirit Breaker inside that smoke. Yep. And it looks like they might run into TMW. Oh, this could be a great gank here. Got him. Working on his arm lane. It's being delivered, but. An easy kill there. A shame they couldn't kill him just a few seconds earlier. Actually would have slowed down his armlet timing, but he did manage to buy out before he died. So minimal losses there, despite yeah. it being a good rotation. Still 500 XP or 500 gold and 800 XP. And Spirit Breaker still yep. needs XP in this, at this point. Yeah, for sure. All right, nice now that he's level seven. Has the Nether Strike pretty easily set up these kills. So AF is setting up bottom already. They have the charge coming out of the Brood, and they have Chrono. Everyone's going to come down as soon as this Chrono comes. And let's see if they stop the Spirit Breaker charge. They do. 
But and still. Spirit Breaker Boyd, finds three. three. Here we go. There's the setup. Marana leaps right into it. Spartan says, hey, I've got a static storm here, guys. Let's party. Out comes the Star Storm and Rebel just trying to split the nines, but it's not happening. They've already lost Venge. They get a counter kill on the Spirit Breaker, but it costs them three heroes. Brood manages to kill the Disruptor on the backside. Not as bad of a fight as it initially seemed, but Thug will walk away with a triple kill. Also clears out all these Broodlings. Yeah, slight misstep Ooh. there by Thug. I guess his level 4 leap was just a little bit too far and he got caught in the chrono. Yeah. But nice static storm kinetic field by the Disruptor to keep them in there. And we will be seeing that Agonyms coming up soon. Absolutely. Also a Blink Dagger now in the void after this successful string of engagements. He sold it, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was wondering. I wasn't too certain if he should go for the void or for the Blink yet. I think it's a little bit too all-in. So what do you think he goes for now? I think he can go for the, either Yasha or Mjolnir. He goes nope. back for the Blink. He goes back for it anyway. Interesting. Skylark maybe in trouble here. TMW. Bashed, bashed again. Primal Roar, Nether Strike. This poor Slardar. He's starting to armlet toggle. Out comes the book, too. Sedoi's here laying in right clicks. They drop a stun on the Spirit Breaker. Time dilation might be enough. It's not. They trade one for one. Spirit Breaker for Slardar. Now Vengeful Spirit's going to get locked down, and Rebel need to get the hell out of here. AF in hot pursuit. Arrow flies by. Almost hits the Earth Spirit, but does fall a bit short. One for two, and with the Sardar dead, AF should be pretty happy with that. They've done a good job slowing down his momentum Whoa. and picking him off. Shocklow, dude, drop your branch or something. Pick your Midas up. It's on the courier. You're broke. You need that. Why is it going all the way back to base? <laughs> How are you not noticing that? That's the only thing that you have in this game. <laughs> and now he sends it back out. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Is, is it going to hope this courier doesn't get picked off here. That would be a sad story. If it dies, his game is over. There's a Radiant Ward here. They could possibly get it. Nope, okay, just going to focus on the tower. Arrow connects on Met Pum as he comes in. Static Storm Kinetic Field again. Madara. Oh, no, it's a whiff blink into the tree line. That's unfortunate. They won't be able to get much out of this. Now in comes Shotchal around the backside. Awkward positioning for here, a, uh, here for AF. They'll lose the Disruptor. Madara dies after dropping the Chrono. Super sloppy fight, and they are going to have to get out. Thug leaps into the tree line, waits for the TP, but they find him. Oh, no, they don't. They don't have detection. Is he going to be able to TP out here? Met Pump finds him. Oh, oh but can't God. stun. Oh, God. That was unbelievably close. I think Vanscore, yeah, Vanscore didn't have a stone refreshed in time, so he couldn't kick a boulder there. Oh, okay. That was just an awkward engagement in general. But Shaklo is back now. Midas was used, and now he's at 1,800 gold after getting a double kill down there. There you go. Four the recovery kills for is real. Him. Completely recovered for him. Not completely, but But if you look at the net way. worth, he's really close to recovery. Now that he has a Midas, he actually has a tool to make it happen. Sadoi going for the legit right-click build here. Orchid picked up alongside the Blightstone. Roche goes down. Aegis picked up by the Slardar. They'll have to pay the, with the life of their Venge. And are they going to be able to get the Slardar, or the Spirit Breaker here, rather? Magnetize has come out. Primal Roar from Skylark. And <laughs> Slardar just comes in and gives him that one last love tap. Void doesn't have a chrono, but they are going to try to chase down Banscore. They already killed Sedoi. Another chaotic uh -oh. exchange, but AF actually getting the better of this. TMW should die as well. Yep, glimpse back down. Thug has an arrow up in two. Oh, bit of a missed glimpse there. I think he should have held on to it a bit longer there. Yep. That would have been huge if they killed him and killed, killed the Aegis right afterwards. Yeah. But still, not too bad for AF there. Yeah, they get like uh, almost a 1,500 net worth swing out of it. Take a look at the overall graph. They are still holding on to a pretty decent lead around 5k XP and net worth. Yeah, and they scale They scale quite well mm -hmm. with the Void and the Marana having such good farm. Now he does have the Aghanims finished up, so we'll see. Will it work this time? All still right. asking it. He is 4-1-9. and one and nine. He has been landing quite decent arrows as well as using his Moonlight Shadow and Starfall, but yeah. still... This will we'll just see. have, I mean, we've talked about this team comp being better for Marana, but one aspect we haven't really mentioned is just the ability to peel for the Marana. You know, you've got Disruptor with glimpses and kinetic yeah. fields, you know, bashes from the Spirit Breaker, charges and stuns. They have so many ways to get people away from Marana, whereas in the last game it felt like Sven was just the, the bulldozer that would come in and no way to get him off the Marana once he's there. Yeah. And we do see Madara is going to be going for a Yasha, so probably into like what the Manta Diffusal build that we've been seeing yeah. a lot of people doing on the Void. I always think about that build against the Skeleton King. It used to be the best way to deal, or Wraith King rather. Yeah. So lock him in the Chrono, drain his mana, and say goodnight to the uh, reincarnation. But it's yeah. still a really annoying build to deal with. You can do a lot of damage now that Diffusal's been buffed. 
Yeah, they did nerf Diffusal, though, in for Illusions, but it is buffed for the main hero. Right, right. I did mistake that yesterday. But. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they kind of tweaked that. I'm also getting rid of or adding the cooldown back to being able to purge. It went from zero to two seconds. Definitely a nerf. Yeah, definitely a nerf, but maybe help some people not spam. <laughs> get rid of their refusals <laughs> by accident. Yeah. yeah. I think the item's still in a good a good place, though. Smoke coming out from both teams. Vanscar actually does finish up a Veil, so he does have some farm on him, too, on that uh, four of spirit. Mm -hmm. Radiant's bottom yeah. tower ain't a pretty Smoke to opposite right sides. Dyer's top yep. Both teams going to miss here. A smoke and a Moonlight Shadow used by AF, actually. Really confident that they would find Rebel here. Both teams using their scans, not finding anything. Blink Dagger also now picked up on the Beastmaster. He's in pretty good shape. Book 3, Blink at 20 minutes. Yeah, they've got like three different forms of initiation if you count Spirit Breaker. Quite nice yep. for them. You know? Yeah, really hard to deal with. And they are trying to split push here. One outer or one tier one tower remaining for AF. Rebel trying to change the status quo there, but TMW. TMW is very alone. In pretty deep. He's got a bench behind him. He still has the Aegis of the Immortal, but this could be uh, the end of it. Static Storm, no kinetic field to follow up. Glimpse back. Slardar in super deep, and he just embraces it. Now the Nether Strike comes, and that's the end of the Aegis. Band score. Use the Veil, looking for an opportunity to use the Magnetize, but doesn't get the opening he was hoping for. Yeah, it took them a while to actually kill the Slardar, so the rest of the team was able to get there in time. Slardar, level 11, blink in onto Thug. They find him. He's got a leap, though. Going to have to turn. Still the stun connects. Void's here, but he gets stunned straight away. He can't chrono. Dominating streak of Marana ended by the Earth Spirit. Usually you actually see the leap disjoint the event stun, but he did it. So he was like, he did it in such a panic maneuver that the bench stun actually yeah. got launched in the mid of the leap. So he gets hit by it instead of disjointing it. Very unfortunate for Thug there. Yeah, I think if it was a disjoint, he probably would have lived. Yeah. Sort of a shame that Void couldn't drop the chrono and save him as well. Stunned as soon as he hopped into the battle. Yep. What is Spirit Breaker saving for? Is he building up anything? Echo Saber, dude, look out. No, he's not building anything. No, he doesn't have any so. money. Yeah, he's still pretty broke. So he has 16 assists, which Top is lane, pretty Skylark. impressive. Should be able to get Cedar here. Yep, stun opener. And that's the power of the Beastmaster, man. Look at that solo kill dam or potential. The damage is just nuts once you get that book three. Yeah, he got a lot of information from that too. He was able to just run directly top through the river. They know that there's no vision in that top side for Rebels now after that movement. Yeah, yeah, good call. Blink oh, dagger. A bit of pressure. Yeah, they're just gonna go into this tier two. Only two outer towers for Rebel remaining. They are very quickly losing map control here. They're gonna glyph this, but I think this tower is destined to fall. Are they gonna go for Van Score? Moonlight Shadow. Madara nice blinks in and gets the tower. That's nice. Well done there. That was cute. I like that. And now Disruptor and Mirana on the hunt as well. This team is very good at using the Mirana ulti for multiple purposes. Yes, they really are. You know, one thing that I didn't really consider, but th the idea of brood against Mirana. In these fights, you can kind of position the Spiderlings if you know where they're coming from to try to absorb arrows. Yeah. Sort of an odd mechanic that... Yeah, brood and Furion, there's a lot of different uh, yeah. things to block it. But Hey, what do you think about that uh, raindrop item, by the way? It just sort of reminded me of it. Oh, it's, it's good. It's not really for every game, but it does have its situations where it's really strong. Yeah. Roaming Rana is one that I think of as could be good against. I think every time I've seen the raindrop actually picked up, it's saved somebody's life. So that's yeah. pretty cool. The mana regen is also nothing to sleep on. Really good on like, doing some of those other heroes. Yeah, they're going to catch the SB. Easy kill. Slardar gets a bash, and a couple of right clicks are more than enough. Yep, and they're but just going to all bail out. Yeah, they get the Tier 2, so still not a bad trade for AF. Tier 2 for their Spirit Breaker at this stage, I think they'll take that. Yep, Shot Glow able to finish up his Manta style now on the Broodmother, so at least he's got he's got something. He's on his way. You know, he's recovered pretty decently after the horrible start, well, the hard start that he had because of how much AF really yeah. uh, put onto him. And now Madara getting Orchided, stunned, and he should just die here. Good up. Wow. That's pretty much going to be the indicator for him to buy a Manta, and that is what he's doing. Yeah, he needs it. 
Sort of surprised at how fast he died there. But now Furion's gone for the Maelstrom. Just this full right-click build. He hits for over 200 with his regular auto attacks, not even factoring in that minus two armor or the additional chain lightning procs. Yep. It's really just going carry mode now. I like this. I, I thought that the Void was actually going to get his blink off to uh, get out of that engagement that he got. Because he saw them for a second, but I guess he just uh, wasn't aware that they would really do that. Just wasn't ready for it. Yeah. It's pretty close, though. BOTs, the next item for Marana. So what do you go now with this build? Like, you go the blink, the ags. I, I understand all the choices so far, but what's the transition? I've seen some people do... Uh, I've seen some teams do, like, the Lincoln's build, and then I've seen other teams go for the crazy Dagon 5 Ethereal Blade build. Okay. I mean, do you think... Is a Veil warranted for Marana here? I don't think you're the one that wants to get the Veil. Okay. You're a carry, right? Yeah. You don't really want to... I feel like you're going backwards if you're going for a Veil. Okay. Yeah. The E-Blade Dagon build sounds really dirty, though. I haven't seen it in a pro game yet. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was a pro game, so... Yeah. I was trying to think. It was crazy. He was so farmed. I mean, it does a ton of damage if you look... Like, Ethereal Dagon 5 is always a, like, a crazy amount of damage, so with double star fall as well on top as well as everything else that Marana puts out. Yeah. Next Roche going to be up in about 90 seconds here. Could become a focal point of this game. It's also just really good versus Slardar. Uh, if he's sprinting at all and he gets caught by something like that, he's just going to see dead. Yeah, with the damage amp. Yeah, that's pretty nice. 15%. And uh, since they have a lot of physical damage up on Rebels, Ethereal Blade could be really nice. I think that might be what we see coming up with, but maybe he goes for the Diffusal Blade, which we have seen as well from some people. Mm -hmm. BKB just about completed on the Slardar. There it is. Gets the recipe. Yep, Manta finished up from Adara as well. Big item pickups on both sides of the coin. Yep. So it's turning into a pretty even game, though. You look at that net worth graph, and it's uh, a mountain that's coming back down on the right side. Pretty yeah. close to a, a zeroed out game now. Rude really has recovered. Yeah, it's really close. But still, I think in a full five, like a straight up 5v5 engagement right now, AF should be able to pick the win. Yeah, I mean, w as always with Void, it's all about the chrono placement. Yeah, it's really about the chrono placement. And it's really about, uh, like, if Slardar gets his BKB off or not, or what he's initiated on. Smoke rotation now from AF. Trying to bait with the Void in the top lane. and. I don't know what it is about these two teams, but it's the second time now that they've smoked at the exact same time and moved in opposite quadrants of the map, both on the, the same wavelength here. And of course, the result is basically just a wash. Still, it's nice to say that, that when that happens, because then it means both teams are kind of like feeling the same about the game. Yeah. Oh, well, we need to see kind of the skirmish. Skylar gets the scout off, and he's got Arcane Rune, too. Oh, boy. Here we go. Charging onto Sadoi. This is the setup that they've been Slaughter. waiting for. Beautiful Roy, Static Storm Kinetic Field setup is great for the Chrono. Swap out to buy Sadoi some time. They've already killed the Slardar. Now it looks like they might get the Venge as well. They lose the Spirit Breaker, but of all the heroes to fall, it's not too bad for AF. They're doing a lot of damage here, but they're actually going to get turned on. Sadoi's right clicks are adding up like crazy, Fogged. My god. I thought that would be a perfect team fight for AF, and they end up losing it. The Mjolnir and the Fur the, that was just a Furion show. Like, and there was nothing. He was just standing outside the Chrono, just beating on everybody. It was the, the Venge time. that made that happen. He was and in the, the Chrono. Yeah. She swapped him out, and yeah, then he the just went ham on the team fight. It's amazing. Yeah, that was actually like really well done by Rebels not to panic in that situation and end up clearing up everybody. And the Mjolnir, the Mjolnir. Uh, passive as well as the active from the static charge ends up being enough damage and yeah, yeah. he basically did more damage than all of Ad Finum as just a solo Oh my god, he did 5k damage 5, in that fight? 5,000 damage in that fight is very well. At the next highest was at 1,500. Yeah. Cool. So, big gold, not a huge gold change, only about 1,500 to Rebels. But, but they get Roshan. Now they get Roshan, they get more money and they get more experience. And now two lives on this Prophet who has definitely shown his true colors. He is the carry, at least right now. Yeah, and he looks like he's, he's going to build into probably BKB, but he m looks like, he yeah, probably BKB. Did, he, the mythical did he sell the Blightstone? Yeah, the yeah. yeah, definitely then. Gonna say. He sold his Blightstone to make a Deso. Something's wrong. Yeah, I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> what the heck? But no, uh, BKB is definitely the smarter choice. It was a really nice engagement too by AF. I really thought it was going to go. Yeah, it oh, good. Skylark initiated on up top. Sadoi with the DB. double damage rune makes it super easy. Two pretty big items, though, picked up after that successful team fight. Now a Veil on Van score to go with his mech. Aether Lens on the uh, Ventral Spirit just now completed. Yeah. And a 10-second BKB on Slardar.
Yeah, that was uh, definitely a really big fight for Rebels, noticing how AF got like the full engagement and the full initiation that they wanted, and it still didn't go in their favor because of that beautiful swap, like you were saying, from Mit How do you say his name? Metpum? Metpum, I guess. I, I, always I, I see Muppet every time I look at it. Muppet. <laughs> Is that just me? <laughs> well, now I'm probably going to see, gonna it, see but it. Yeah, Muppet. <laughs> big Jim Henson fan. Yeah. Brute's items have not been progressing too much over the last few minutes here. Just been hanging on to that Manta, though he does have 2,000 gold stored up. Tier 2 up top gets taken out by the Dire side. Rebels starting to tighten their grasp on this game. I wonder if they're going to poke at high ground here. Hmm. Thugs picked up a plate mail. So maybe an AC? AC or Shivas? Interesting. Yeah, maybe the Shivas. It's over the... I think almost think certainly not a Lotus Orb. I hope not. Wow, Guardian Greaves actually out on the Earth Spirit. Guardian Greaves plus Veil, he's found a surprising amount of farm after that, that uh, kind of slow start. Yeah, just living in those engagements in that last fight got him yeah. so much. And they did uh, trade hand. Uh, the gem traded hands. Yeah, it was on the Beastmaster, and it yep. got uh, swapped up on the Earth Bought Spirit. Bought by Marana, so. Yeah. Even more going the way of Rebels. Doi. Almost finds Spartan, but Glimmer Cape keeps him alive. TP out. And now I think they just transition into a push. Yeah, they can go for this tier two. They have the Aegis plus DKB on the carry on now. Yeah, plenty of time on the Aegis to boot. About two and a half minutes. He's going for Shiva's on, on uh, Murana. All right. Radiant More magic damage. Does synergize with the Veil that's been picked up on the Disruptor. Great anti-carry to have against uh, all these right clickers here. Yeah, lots of armor. Yep. Oh, if they take a fight right now, bottom this could be big. If they can, if they can take the fight. Light shadow used. Dyer get a sentry ward down preemptively. What did he disrupt the roll? Is there an illusion? I'm not sure. I didn't see it. I heard. Yeah, it. there was an earth spirit illusion. Oh. Or at least it looks like it because there's an earth spirit illusion mid. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Well, now they can't really defend that tower. Yeah. Only one outer tower remains for Ad Finum. And now a minute and a half on the Aegis. I think they could... Well, now it's pretty scary to poke at high ground against the Void Inferno available. Would yeah, you can just, like, force him back, but... Yeah. You don't want to go for that high ground just yet. Yeah, with the Aegis, I'm always tempted to try and bait and force something out, but... Uh, yeah, probably high risk, low expected value. 3k pub plays. That good stuff. <laughs> I do really like the Shiva's choice here for Thug. The high armor helps mitigate the damage from the Slardar. It will also help mitigate the right clicks from the Nature's Prophet. And since he has the Mjolnir, less uh, Chain Lightnings coming out. Just sort of a, a compounding item in terms of slowing down their general damage. Yeah, Shiva's always... People overlook the aura attack slow too. So 45 aura attack slows. Pretty big. Pretty decent. Yeah. yeah. When you think about Gloves of Haste give you, what, 15? Yeah. 20 now. 20 after 20. A, a, oh long, yeah. a long while ago they changed that. They got buffed up. A little bit of a small buff. But still. And we do see Madara does go for that Diffusal Blade as well. So he's pretty much at his peak for the next good while. Yeah. Yeah, this is where he can just hop on somebody in a Chrono and his damage output will actually jump up a lot, assuming they have mana. I keep clicking on Spirit Breaker thinking he's going to have some items, but I guess they made him the full five and just went for the Disruptor as the four. Yep. With that glimmer in the veil like you were talking about. And the Disruptor has actually just been able to survive in the fights. I think it's just been part of the natural progression. The Spirit Break, the way he's just been charging in. He just starts the fight. Yeah, he's yeah. the first one to die in almost every engagement, it seems like. So he'll probably just go like, what, Blade Mail or something? Yeah. Just yeah. charge in there and be like, hit me! I think that would be really good, actually. Hit me! Get you some extra stats, too. Yeah. Brood going for the BKB. Just about has it now. His build looks ugly. I don't know what it, what it is about it. Ah. The phase boot Manta BKB just doesn't look nice on Brood. All about the aesthetics, huh? Uh, I mean, it's not about the... It's just like when you really think... Like, you look at it and you're just like, is that really what you want? I guess, I guess you kind of have to. I mean, I'm not sure what they're trying to do with the brood pick here. Is he does he want to split push? Does he want to just be the the kind of carry right click guy that actually just fights people? Because with th this build, it looks like he wants to be in the front line, just straight up attacking supports. I think initially in the draft they were just expecting him to do much better in the lane, but he got crushed. Yeah, 
He does have decent farm now, though. Number four on net worth overall. Only about 1.5k behind that of the Void. It's not too bad. Slardar still with a 10 second BKB. Now a plate mail picked up. Also finds his level 16, so that minus 20 they armor. He goes on right thug. in on the Thug. He's My tanky, God. though. Pretty tanky. Glimmer Cape's going to buy him some time. Now the Chrono from Madara. Follow up as well from the Disruptor. They get the first kill on the Broodmother. TMW still alive, but that BKB is expired, and now he's exposed. Sadoi still in the middle of the fray, doing a lot of damage. A one for two so far. Now they turn on to Madara. Seems like they don't have any way to deal with this Furion, who is still hitting like a complete madman. Three for two. AF actually take the fight. For now, at least. Thug barely survives on just a sliver of HP. So tanky. The Shiva's really paying off already. Yeah. I thought Shiva's he was dead plus there the for Vlad sure. Zora. Yeah, he just ends up living with just, just a little bit of health. Huge damage from the Earth Spirit in that fight. 2,500. A lot of that coming from the Magnetize, of course. Yeah, but still, nice fight from AF. Nice discipline from there. How, how did the Void actually die? Did he like uh, get get stunned and locked down, or did he get orchided and with it was Manta down? Because I feel like he shouldn't be really that killable with the Diffusal. I guess maybe the damage just added up. The, the constant damage from the Earth Spirit just I mean, added up. That, and it was just like the last fight where Sadoi was basically ignored. It, he's at that point where he's so big that it feels like AF are saying, well, let's just kill all of his friends, then we'll deal with him when he's by himself. But the problem is his right clicks really hurt, and he's going to have a Scythe of Ice in the near future. I mean, I imagine that's what that ultimate orb will turn into. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Great item on Profit. Not just for the utility, but gives him extra right click, extra mana. The scary thing, though, is that even though TMW did get have his BKB and it is 10 seconds, now 9, like you were saying, is I just feel like he is falling, about, falling behind maybe a little bit. The net worth you can see on AF is just going up while he's just kind of like he's just kind of like plat like plateaued out with the Broodmother. Yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot of people hyping up Stardar in this patch, but in both of these games, he's felt a little bit underwhelming. This game is definitely much better. It was a mid Slardar too, so that's very weird. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. But even just in these fights, he's a little bit of a one-trick phony. That was not a bad initiation, but they couldn't even get the kill on the target they started on. I feel like the teams could be playing around the Slardar a bit better in the in that type of essence. That's true. Because like when you saw when we saw MVP playing it, they played so well around the Slardar, and he just got like that arm lit into blink into heart, and then he was just such a do dominating force. Yeah. And this team isn't really like playing around the Slardar so much. It feels like more they're playing around the Furion. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. BKB though up on Thug now, so this. Carry Potom is starting to get really tanky. Yeah, what'd he sell? He sold the Midas already. Yep. Okay. Roshan, though, under assault by Rebel. He's got the amp damage, so he will go down quick. This maybe is Rosh 3. Maybe not getting the most value out of that Midas. It's only 37 minutes in. I guess he really wanted the BKB. Why not just sell the Aquila and keep the Midas? Uh, he, he didn't have it. I guess he wanted it now. He wanted to actually just buy it. Yeah. yeah. But it's only 37 minutes. He's only, he got the Midas at, what, the 12 or 11 minute mark? It was kind of late. So yeah. he only had 25 minutes of using that Midas. Yeah. Not really the most efficiency there well, at that I point, mean, Yeah, the, the Aqua is nice on Mirana, but I'm always tempted to hang on to that extra attack speed also. A yeah. hero like that. That as well. Refresher out on the Beastmaster. Huge item pickup for Skylark. Yeah, he definitely he definitely needs the BKB on the Mirana. But yeah, like we were saying, <laughs> still interesting. And we do have the, I think that is the Hex finished up for the Furon coming out on the Courier. And you were saying, yeah, that was the third Roshan. So yep. we should be seeing, yeah, Cheese up on the Broodmother. Yeah. And this Aegis up on the Slaughter. And you know, I'm a little surprised to see Skylark go for a Refresher at this timing. He's going to have a lot of mana issues trying to use a, a double Primal Roar. Especially if you put some Necronomicons in there. Especially given that he doesn't have Arcane Boots. You know, he's still on BOTs, so... Yeah, maybe he should be like carrying around like a mango or two or something. Yeah. In order to use it. Probably wouldn't be too su surprised to see him I mean, do that. He so. has like just enough mana to use double primal roar if he doesn't throw axes or, you know, summon anything else. Yeah. It's going to be tight. So, new fresh Aegis, one minute into its countdown. They may just try and push down this tier 2 tower. I think like it's really hard for both these teams to break the high ground. They don't really have the best sieging lineups. Oh, they were they were they wanted to set up for Cedoy there. They were like running three up and then they scanned and they caught the slot. They caught somebody. So it kind of deterred them from going for that a very aggressive play that they were going to do. Here we go. Rebel grouped up in the mid lane and all the while AF in the top. We are going to see some split pushing. 
Tier 2 in the mid will fall. No Glyph comes out from AF, realizing they may need to hold it to defend the high ground. Charge from Spirit Breaker onto Sedoi. They ping out TMW. Slithering his way to the top. Looks like Rebel are just going to back up and make sure they can mount a defense. They're going to go for Sedoi here. Don't know if it's a good idea. Yeah, they're not going to try it. Yeah. They just cancel it. They're just waiting to get the opportunity seeing people in mid lane. Maybe they catch Vanscore here. Oh. They get the silence. He's got Manta, though. Yeah. It's enough to push him back, though. Yeah. So even though they don't get a kill, no chrono. Very hard to alive. kill the Void. He has Blink, Manta, Diffusal. Yeah. Diffusal always works versus the Orchid as well. Sedoi with a yeah, pretty aggressive teleportation there. But doesn't catch anyone. He's now picked up a Crystalis, so it seems like a Bloodthorn next for Furion. Upgrade that Orchid. Yep. Does seem like it. Now, we've talked a lot about Bloodthorn. Kind of an odd item that is really not good a lot of the time, but this is a scenario where it's really great. Furion, super farmed. Two other physical damage right clickers. Yep. With Avenge on your team as well to amp up everybody's right click, so. And this is where you can just upgrade that slot. You don't have to throw away your Orchid, but you get to keep it. Now it's going to go down to an 11-second cooldown once he gets the Bloodthorn, which, yep. if you think about, is kind of disgusting in these longer team fights. Yeah, absolutely. But you do make a good point. Having those extra right clickers uh, kind of adds some value to it. <laughs> Rebel are sort of just wandering around here, though. I'm kind of curious what their game plan is. They have a... Aegis Cheese, one minute left on the Aegis. It seems like they want to try to have a go at high ground, but really respecting the lineup of AF. Yeah, I just, I really like the way that the support scale for Rebels. Like, the Earth Spirit is just, just keeps getting stronger. Now he's kind of at his peak, but Vengeful will infinitely getting, be getting stronger, while the Spirit Breaker Disruptor aren't really getting much, much beef here. Oh, they jump in on the Disruptor. TMW just brings him down. Great way to start this fight. All the while, Sedoi lays into the Tier 3 tower. They actually get a buyback out of the Disruptor. Madara hops in looking for an initiation, but they disengage quicker than hell. No chrono from Madara. They might be able to get a kill on Vanscore here. Charge comes in, gets a double bash and the Nether Strike. TMW comes in to try stun. and commit to this. Three man stun into a three man magnetize. BKB used by Thug. There's the chrono from Madara. Static Storm on top of it. They're going to try to focus down the Slardar. His Aegis soon to expire. He dies at just about the perfect timing here. Shachalo just standing his ground, destroying Skylark. They go in onto Sedoi, but TMW stunned up, ready to drop the Slytherine Crush. Can he get it off? They'll actually lose their profit. TMW just getting kited on the backside, and what started as a good fight for Rebel is now going the way of AF. They get the kill on the Spirit Breaker. I heard a BKB used. It's TMW. Misses the Crush on Madara. That's painful. Buyback now from the Furion. He's going to TP back into the fight, but Slardar's already dead. He might not want to do that. What an odd fight for Rebel. It really seemed like they could do it, but it all just fell apart in the end. That fight was all over the place, but yeah, it heavily favors a, uh, They Them killing the Furion was a really big oh, deal, as well as taking out the Aegis and the Cheese. They win the fight through all of that, but it did 6, cost 6,500 net worth exchange, dude. Yeah, it only costed them the Spirit Breaker as well. That's pretty surprising. They played that fight super well. The Crodo was perfect on top of basically everyone after the BKBs were running low, the Static Storm to follow up on top afterwards. Yeah. Really, really nice uh, way they took the fight from Ad Venom. And the Furion ended up buying back in the end and really yeah. got nothing out of it. That was, was uh, pretty much the minus, that minus 2,000, that big hit right there that they got from that fight. Yeah, that was less than ideal. They also ate the cheese, and of course the Aegis was utilized, so that advantage is completely gone now. I wonder what Thug goes for now. He's kind of like, I kind of have no idea what really, what really builds he's trying to go for here, because it's just it's very different than what we've been seeing. Yeah. So I'm wondering if he maybe goes for the Hex now at this point, or if he goes for maybe a Scotty to have some right clicks, or maybe even for Lincolns to just be super safe. But I guess we'll see what he opts to do. I think the Hex, Hex is very good, but I think the Aya Scotty actually has some potential as well. I guess it depends on how they, how long they see this game going on, and how much they see the right clicks of Marana being that key piece. Yeah. But I, I agree with the Hex. I, I think that is just having an extra crowd control, to even just to lock down the Furion if they want to focus his friends just so he can't right-click and destroy their whole team. This is a pretty obvious smoke. Their bottom lane is pushing in really hard, top lane is pushing in, and the scan actually catches them. Yeah, great scan here from Rebels. 
They are going to have to go back down bottom and repel this. Some yummy farm for one of their carries. It's funny how the Jinx, the curse really works. You know, I was just talking about how I like the supports on Rebels and then they get fully team wiped right afterwards. Yep. How dare you say something positive about one of these teams? Yep. The caster curse. Now another smoke, this time on the side of Rebel. It's really it's really all in on the Chronos, though, like we've been seeing. It's yeah. really up to how well Madara can place them, and that's pretty much going to dictate the flow of the game. Yeah, I mean, I, even this net worth graph really still is oscillating around the zero mark. It's a pretty small lead, about 6k for Rebel for 44 minutes in. It's pretty negligible. Yeah, the big situation now for the next fight for AF is if they kill the Furion, they're in a huge, they have a huge window, because he did buy back. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little scary. Rebel may just uh, take that to be a bit more passive for the next four minutes until it comes back. Cedo's build is so manly. Let's get a Dominator now. Wow. Very interesting. Very different than you say. It's just a full right-click force. What did he sell to pick up the Dominator? The drum? Yeah, yeah. he sold that a bit ago. He was holding the Aegis. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry, he wasn't holding the Aegis. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. He did have the drum initially before that. It's going to be a long Roshri spawn here, close to the max timer. Oh. Madara, what are you building with that shadow amulet that I see in your stash on the void? Is he going to be going for a Silver Edge? You know, that would be a great item to deal with this Fury on damage output. It does, yeah, it does reduce a lot of the damage. It gets rid of the Slardar passive if he does hit him with it, yeah. or the Venge passive if he hits him with it, or the Broodmother passive if he hits him with it. Yeah. The pa I mean, the, the break is definitely good to get rid of the passives, but I think this the minus 50% damage output for five seconds is pretty gnarly against this right-clicking Prophet who hits yeah. for uh, 350 per auto attack. It's pretty scary. Also helps you set up your Chronos in a better position rather than just relying on the Blink Dagger, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And it also gives, you know, some attack speed, some stats. Yeah, that's a very interesting pickup that he's going for. Yeah, especially at this stage of the game. Like a, like a late-game Silver Edge. Also on that level 2 defusal. Both teams just kind of posturing around the Roche pit here. Just turning into a stalemate here, Fog. Both teams so cautious about going up towards the high ground. Yeah, it's a very, very, very close game. The next big pickup, at least for AF, I feel like is Skylark having another item to give him enough mana to have double roar and everything. And the potential in the fights yeah. could be a really big deal. And if Spirit Breaker lives one fight and gets like 5,000 gold off of one <laughs> engagement, but he just dies right in the beginning every time. Yeah, it's hard for the Spirit Breaker. Hex is out on the Marana, so we were right in our assessment. No Scotty today, boys. Yeah, he's just kind of a spellcaster, full-blown spellcaster at this point. Yeah. It's funny, Furion is a battle mage, and Marana is kind of just a, spell a full-blown spellcaster when you kind of see it like maybe the opposite, usually. Yeah. Usually the Furion's more of like the type of like, uh, like support type, of, not like support, but you know, like he goes more of those support-ish items. Yeah. Star Storm. I can't believe how few items the Spirit Breaker has, though. We're 40, we're almost 50 minutes in, and he's still on the exact same stuff that he had 30 minutes ago. Power sure. Tread Urn. I think he could have bought at least a couple pieces. I think if he had like had like blade mail in his quick buy, and then as he's dying, like, pick up the blade mail, or yeah. the chain mail on the robe, and he might even have the blade mail at this point. I feel like he's been losing gold like every time he just dies instead of spending the gold before he dies. Yeah. That's part of the beauty of blade mail too. It has that easy build up with a couple of low ticket items. At least something, so he's not losing gold every time he throws his life away. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, he's definitely doing his job, but you still have to find a way to progress your items. Yeah. It's just going to get harder from here. Who, who doesn't want items? It's true. Smoke from AF. Roche is up. Both teams are feeling frisky around the pit. Oh, it's all scan. There's a radiant scan here. Not going to find a hell of a lot. Dyer used theirs. They see Skylark. Both teams privy to the general positioning of one another. Rebels can kill that Roche so fast that they end the pit. Yeah. They've got the charge on 
On the slaughter, he lets it hit, he doesn't pop his BKB. Oh no, and now the Hex, TMW in a lot of trouble to swap from Met Pump. Gonna keep him alive, but what a chrono from Madara! That locks down Sedoi, Furion will be the first one to die in this fight. Now TMW uses the BKB, Magnetize does a lot of damage, Spirit Breaker buys back instantly. This is looking to be a bad fight for Rebel though, TMW with nowhere to go. Tries to armlet toggle, but it's not enough. Now Van score left behind. Should go down to the right clips of Thug. Shotchlow doing everything he can, but Skylark gets Glimmer Cape, stays alive, and it's a full five-man wipe. And he another man buyback. It oh. comes up, it came up right at the end of the fight, and he was like spamming it. Oh now he buys back as the fight's over. That is so painful. But another very huge net worth exchange. Really nice play from Adara, though. Like, he knows what his position is in this game now. He just has to land the Chrono on the Furion. And if TMW not popping his BKB forces his bench teammate to swap him. And that puts Sidoy completely at risk of just dying inside the Chrono. Yeah. They cannot feel that. Probably feels so bad after that point. Yeah. They were in a very good position to win this game, and now it's Earth a Spirit. lot harder. 4,500 damage in that last team fight. Yeah. His magnetizers kept refreshing over and over. Yeah. The veil. It's really sick. But now a nice easy Roche for AF. Aegis Cheese, that is Roche number four. They give the Aegis to Madara, and Cheese gets picked up by Skylark here. Yeah, who's got a full AC if he wants to buy it. Wow, he does. And we might see Spare Breaker pick up an item. I'll have to hand that gem over to somebody else, but... Void has enough gold now for his Silver Edge, but maybe wants to pool for buyback. Actually has enough surplus, so... Yeah, he's got a Vlad on the Disruptor as well. He didn't drop that for the Aegis. Oh, yeah. So they'll probably they'll probably sell that pretty soon, and they'll buy that on somebody else. Maybe not right now. But soon. All right, well, the stalemate continues. AF get the Roche, but not making any kind of aggressive move towards the high ground. Yeah, still definitely a little bit hard to break high ground. They do have Disruptor uh, Aghanims now, though, Ooh. which is nice. If the Slardar makes that same kind of misplay again, it's going to be really crippling now. They can get that Static Storm in the right place. Definitely one of the better Ags upgrades that you can get as a support. Yeah. So now Spirit Breaker should definitely start getting items now because Marana is sitting at the point where he is 6-slotted with 6,000 gold. So he should be buying out the wards, sentries, everything for his buddy. Because now Spirit Breaker can actually start to scale at least a little bit. Yeah, maybe next time. Maybe next time. That's a, I like that name. So here we go. Five hero rotation from AF towards the bottom lane. They did already take out that tier three tower quite some while ago. Oh, Madara is not finishing up the Shadow Blade. He is actually has double Perseverance at base, so he's going for the Refresher. Wow, okay. The double Void Chrono. So I guess uh, assessment wrong about the Silver Edge. Just Shadow Blade for initiation, get away. He still might finish. I, I still wouldn't see why he doesn't finish. This. Oh yeah, at some point it's worth upgrading, but it seems like he got it more for a positioning tool than to yeah. you know, stop the damage of Furion. They so clear out the creep wave here. AF being very cautious. TMW jumps in. Oh, waste of a static storm. And that hurts. AF might just back out now that that was a whiff. I understand what he's going for there. It's because if TMW doesn't pop BKB, he do he can't. You know, the disruptor has agonims now, so if he ca gets that catch there, it's massive. Yeah. I feel like maybe he thought that Madara was just gonna chrono or something. Maybe he knows. Well, we've got a pretty good window here. Two and a half minutes on the Aegis, and disruptor's ult will be up in 45 seconds. So in the ideal world here, they can have another go while the Aegis is still alive. I want to see them pick something, some items up though, like 6,000 gold on Beastmaster, 3,000 gold on Void, 8,000 gold on Marana. Wow. Well, at this point, Sedoi is basically capped out on the profit. 30k yeah. net worth. I don't know what you upgrade from here. Maybe you get some BOTs instead of phase boots. But yeah, he just needs the Moon Shard and then bots, basically. Yeah, the Moon Shard. I always forget about that damn Moon Shard. That would actually be really good on him this game, though. He's already right-clicking like a madman. It's terrifying to play versus a Refresher Void, though, especially as a Furion. You're just always at risk. A stalemate continues. Yeah, both teams. This is one of the most passive games I think I've, I've cast so far. I mean, there have been some team fights and kills, but... Both teams just seem so timid right now. Huge games for both teams. I mean, yeah. AF really wants to win all their games. 
And yeah. they, them losing that one to Rebels early before was very costly. And now, yeah, Rebels, this is their this is their last life, basically. They need this 2-0, like we were saying, to even have a chance. Yeah, this is kind of a break point in the group. Still you know, early on, well, kind of at the midpoint in Group B. So it does make sense. There's a lot on the line here. AF are in a very good spot. Refresher is up on the void, so we will have a double chrono here, and he might just use the uh, first one aggressively. Pops the Manta a little early on. Could also just be patient and wait for that Aegis. Assault Cross on the Beastmaster gets delivered, and they force out the Glyph. Rebels being very cautious about how they engage this. They wait for the Orchid to come back up. Madara gets silenced. Now the charge in to reset. They'll finish off melee barracks. Range still standing. And with that, AF just back out. Chrono. Oh, here we go. He jumps in. Chrono on two. Swap out. Venge going to be stuck inside. Madara not getting much out of that one. He refreshes. Skylark does as well after dropping the stun on Sadoi. The BKB comes out a bit too late. Furion's dead. No buyback. This could be the end. That's Brew the getting game. locked down as well. Three heroes in the grave without any buybacks. <laughs> She stays alive longer than she should have, perhaps. So now it's TMW versus the world. Buyback on Brood. AF looking like they're going to be able to level this series out 1-1 and shatter the hopes of Rebels, and they will. The GG gets called, 46-24. to The Refresher Void comes in handy at the end. Doesn't even need the second Chrono. Honestly, at this point, just it's, it's just so hard for them to take the fights. Yeah. Like, we, like we were saying in Draft 2, there's so many different forms of initiation on the side of AF, and... Once they have all these items, it makes it so easy for them. The Void can just, he can like, they did they did that kind of fake back thing. They kind of backed up, and then as soon as he saw the, the opportunity, he jumps in, gets yeah. two people, and then they wait till the Chrono's almost low, and Static Field on top, like Static Storm on top, and you can't use your BKB. You die inside the Static yeah. Storm, and then, oh, another Chrono on top. Just way too much to deal with I at mean, that point. That setup at the end is like what AF was waiting for the whole game. You can yeah. the Aegis on the Void, and then you can just put him on the high ground. He has two Chronos, and you just say, all right, well, fight the Void. And then as soon as they initiate, Spirit Breaker comes charging in. They reset and take it from there. Yeah, the Varana does end up working this game. Yeah. Also unfortunate for Sadoi at the end there, he didn't have the buyback. I think it was still on cooldown from that buyback that he used accidentally or, or mistakenly, a situation where it was really just a bad buyback. It was a very close game. It was just like very small mistakes that lost this game for Rebel, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that means they're mathematically not in the top two now, but uh, I definitely think rocky for Rebel. I think, that might, I think that might mean that they're out of this sh of yeah. showing. Yeah, all right. Well, a nail-biter of a series. Still a good performance from Sadoi. It was pretty crazy to see the Prophet get that far. I mean, he really was the right-clicking carry that yeah. game. Completely capped out at the end. He's 30k plus net worth. I don't think we got to see a single Bloodthorn usage, though. No, I don't think we did. Kind of stinks. How unfortunate. I don't know if he even hexed anybody, did he? Mm, Maybe no. like one or two hexes. They really focused him at the end. I mean, yeah. it seemed like they said, okay, you have one job, Skylark. Lock down Sadoi. Make yeah. sure he does not run amok. And that's exactly what he did. He dropped the ult, refreshed, and he was ready to drop it again, but they killed Sadoi before he could even use the second Primal Roar. Pretty impressive. Yep. All right, well, that's it for this heat. I don't know what's coming up next on this stream, but I'm done. Sayori and Fog with signing I'm off. I'm with Will doing something. All right, Fog and Blitz, somewhere, some way, you'll find it, guys. Thank you for joining us here on BTS2. Still a ton of Dota coming up here in the Manila Madness Hub. Stick around because we're coming back after this break.